Dear students, you know that in order to visualize a protein, you just trace the path of the different alpha carbons in order in the backbone of a protein. The distances that are there between the alpha carbons need to be measured, therefore, in order for you to reconstruct the backbone. But how do we do this experimentally? Because we need to know exactly the size of these distances in order to recreate the protein. And that will be the focus of this module. Let me show you a technique that is used to measure the distances between the alpha carbons. This technique is called the X-ray crystallography. X-ray crystallography gives you the relative positions of different atoms within a molecule. Similarly, for proteins, it can help you to get the position of alpha, alpha carbons within the different backbone positions. So once these positions are measured experimentally, then you can store them using the Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z, and therefore reconstruct the entire backbone of the protein. The X-ray crystallography experimental theory is based on the diffraction that is experienced by the X-rays once they are shined onto the protein. So if the X-rays are shown on proteins, then they diffract. And once they diffract, we measure these diffractions and then reverse engineer the structure by looking at each diffraction pattern. In this figure, there is the entire schema of how X-rays are used to measure the crystalline structure of a protein. So if you simply shine different X-rays onto a sample, then you see these diffractions occurring. As shown here, so these diffractions, once they are occurring, you can just measure the position of each atom by solving these diffractions. But for that, first you need to crystallize your protein because the X-rays essentially they are diffracted by a solid crystallized protein only. Here below you have the crystal and then you shine some X-rays on it and this is how the diffraction pattern actually looks. So if you solve these patterns, then here is your backbone of the protein that has been reconstructed using the alpha carbons. Once you have achieved this, then you can simply add different R groups, side chains onto the backbone and then achieve the overall protein structure. This is the experimental background of X-ray diffraction and X-ray crystallography towards Mayering the protein structure. One important thing to remember here is that the proteins which are crystallized can give you the structure using this technique. But what if your protein is not uh, liable to being crystallized? In that case, you cannot use X ray crystallography because then there will be no diffraction pattern. More so, the distances that are measured by the diffraction are measured using angstrom unit and a resolution of a one angstrom or two angstrom is required for you to determine the position of the alpha carbons within the backbone of the protein. 